You know, in my 13 years on YouTube, I don't think I can say that I've ever come across a greater pile of human garbage than Dana Coverstone. This man has taken blasphemy to a new level that I didn't think that I'd see in my time. And yes, I'm going to be exposing that today. What he says in this newest video entitled My December 1st Declaration is truly astonishing, but then it shouldn't surprise anybody who truly loves Jesus Christ because we were warned through Holy Scripture that these types of situations would come. These false prophets would come. They would rise and be in our midst. And so today that's what I'm going to be looking at as we go. And I do ask that you stay with me uh, because what you're about to hear is truly shocking from a, a prideful clown who has no fear of the living God, yet claims to know God and speak for God while claiming not to speak for God. And I'll show you what I mean by that as we go. So first I'm going to come back and we're going to document some things. This, of course, is a video that he made back in June. Get your paper, get your pen, and we are going to write down some very important points as we expose this man. Here we go. I want to share three specific dreams that I've had recently, uh, going back to December. Two that I've had this week, both, both Monday and last night, Monday and Tuesday night. Because I believe, number one, they are prophetic. Uh, okay, out of his own mouth, he believes that they are prophetic. Write it down. All right, we're going to listen to the next clip. Here we go. And uh, I do not claim to be a prophet by any means. I understand, though, that some dreams and visions by their nature have a prophetic tendency to them. Now, does that make it okay? Does that even make sense? These dreams are prophetic, but I don't claim to be a prophet. But here's some prophetic dreams. Can you separate the two? And the answer is no. You're claiming to speak on the behalf of God. This is prophecy. Maybe you're not a full-time prophet, but nevertheless, you are delivering prophecies that you say are from God. All right, next clip. What I'm doing right now, and I'm telling you that between September and November of this coming year, and you'll be able to check me, you know, if, if, if by the time we get November, nothing's happened, or December 1st, man, you call, you call me on this and say, Dana Coverstone, you're an absolute idiot and a fool for saying those things. You know, that would be the last thing that I would say to him, even though I'd like to. And, and, and that is true. He's an idiot and a fool. But even as he delivered that line with a smirk on his face, it seems like this is all a game to him. And he has no idea the danger that he is in. And make no mistake, he truly is in danger of hellfire for the absolute folly that he has rendered to not only his flock, but the millions of people that have watched him. Do you know how many people's faith are going to have been made shipwreck because of this clown's actions. He has spewed forth prophetic word. Many have heard him. And now that none of what he said has happened in November, how many are now questioning their faith and feeling foolish? Now, they're not going to just walk away from Dana Coverstone. They're going to walk away from Jesus Christ because of this man's actions. And this man, as you'll see, is completely unrepentant and defiant. All right, so now we're going to get to the video that he put out today, December 1st, 2020. Will he own up to it? Let's examine it. We're going to listen to it. And we're going to comment as we go. Ready? Here we go. Hey, this is Pastor Dana Coverstone, and I'm sitting in the same chair in the same place I was five months ago when I shared a dream. I want to bring a couple things up before I get into more detail about what I'm going to say today. I made it very clear when I shared these dreams that I'm a pastor. I'm not a prophet. I've never called myself a prophet. There are people who are calling me prophet, and I don't want to be called that because I'm a pastor. Okay. So, in all actuality, you can do your own research. For the sake of time, I can't play every single video that he has come out with his prophecies. 
But again, just saying, you know, right off the bat, you can tell where he's going with this. Hey, I told you then, I'm not a prophet. So don't blame me that none of what I prophesied came to pass. I told you that I'm not a prophet. I'm just a, a good old fashioned, you know, bumbly Kentucky pastor doing his thing. Uh, never mind the PayPal that I set up and the LLC. Otherwise, uh, that has nothing to do with anything. But again, I, I gave myself an out back then. I'm not a prophet, so you can't blame me. Does that work? And the answer is no. I had a dream, <clears throat> three dreams specifically. Voted into a video, a 15-minute, nine-second video. Go on Facebook for 1,100 friends. Having no idea what would happen in just a week. That a week later, there'd be a million views. Um, I shared it as a pastor because I had concerns with dreams I'd had. I saw things happening. And I was concerned, once again, as a pastor, as a family man, as a friend. I wanted to warn people. And I believe, if anything, God gave me these dreams to warn the church, to wake up the church. So listen to what he's saying here. And this is where such heretical doctrine is in play. He's telling you that he believes that God gave him lying prophecies to share with the people in order to wake them up. Never mind the power that's in the actual word of God. He's saying that God said, well, I've got to do something to wake up the church. Let me send a ton of lying prophecies through this Squidward potato head. Uh, and that's what's going to get people to wake up. I know many of you are going to go back to the Old Testament and talk about the time when lying spirit was sent forth. That's very, very different. But in essence, what he's saying here is, is that God provided him with lies to spread in order to bring, bring people to Jesus. Does that make sense? That somehow the word of God just couldn't do it. He needed this to happen. This is what this man is saying. It's unbelievable. And to get people praying. Um, just in the last two days, I have received hundreds of emails and messages, uh, even text messages, uh, some of which are basically saying, nothing in your dreams came true, and others saying, everything in your dreams have come true. Uh, who cares? Who cares? Uh, and, and I'd like to meet the person who said, everything in your dreams has come true because so far I've not seen any Russian or Chinese soldiers on the ground here in America rounding up people and putting them into quadrants as you prophesied. So I don't know where they can get. Again, you're probably lying because no one who's sane would say that. In fact, nothing that you said has come true. So the only ones that are telling the truth here are the ones who have emailed you and chastised you through whatever form of media that indeed you are a false prophet. Some saying all oh, the timing is off and this and that. All I know is that God gave me dreams. I shared them on. See, again, he's doubling down. He's attributing lies to the living God. He said, well, I don't know. All I know is that God gave me these dreams. That's all he knows. I don't know what happened. I just know that God gave me these lying prophecies. It's astonishing. Oh, I, I don't have the words. This man absolutely and categorically sickens me. Facebook, I made it clear I was not a prophet. I made three recommendations. How many times will he say that? See, right now he's on the defense. I, I made it clear that I'm not a prophet. No, you, you, you said you weren't, but then you gave prophecies, and they were wrong. That makes you a false prophet. Patience, and that was probably the worst thing I could have done, so, so to speak. Although I don't regret doing it now because I, I believe, you know, I've, I've seen already this week uh, food banks, lines, miles long. Uh, we're already starting to see shortages again in the stores for certain things and items. Yeah, yeah, and who didn't? call that. Everybody knew that was coming. Such vague prophecy. So you're saying that some of it was right, and, and, and that's just not the case. Not the case. And uh, try to find ammunition today. Can't do it. Um, yeah, the, the militant 
Kentucky potato. It's telling you to buy ammunition, get ready to kill people uh, because that's what Christians do. So he's trying to get ammunition. He's still buckling down on this whole thing. It's it's truly amazing. I'm still buying silver. I'm still, you know, putting some money aside for those things because I do believe we're going to see the financial realm of our nation change. They're already talking about a great reset. You got guys like Trudeau and Schwab talking about a great reset, and that involves primarily finances of the world. See, right now he's monologuing. He says, you know, hey, you know, some bad things are still going to happen. Hey, by the way, who doesn't think bad things are going to happen? Especially true Christians. We've read the Bible. We know bad things are coming. But the very vagueness of Squidward here telling you, well, I still think things are going to happen. Well, what happened to the fist smashing into November and shattering? Things were supposed to be so bad. Washington, D.C. burning down, blazing, as you said. None of that happened. But again, he's monologuing to save face because he knows that he's dead wrong. And just please note the absolute defiancy of admitting that he's a false prophet. Just the outright refusal to repent of his dastardly and false prophecies. It is, again, amazing. Um, you've got digital currency on the horizon uh, being pushed. But nonetheless, I want to first of all do one thing. I want to commend the people who began to pray. One of my dreams was about a... Now this is where he draws you into it. Hey, you know, nothing happened that I said was going to happen, but you guys were so wonderful for praying at my suggestion. Thank you. You guys are wonderful. And, and again, flattery will get you everywhere, apparently. September Psalm Assembly event, uh, and people people prayed. People got up, people prayed. Uh, I heard about prayer times, prayer meetings, all sorts of things from around the nation, even around the world, of uh, people praying. Uh, I believe the dreams that God gave me were warning dreams. I do believe God gave me the <laughs> They really weren't. They were very specific uh, prophecies of events that were supposed to happen within the designated time that you spoke. They weren't just warnings. If you were warning the people, you would read right from Holy Scripture. But you didn't do that. You made a bunch of stuff up. You made a ton of money. And now you're trying to save face while standing defiantly against the living God. Yes, against the living God. Dreams. I'm not going to apologize or change that. I believe God gave me the dreams. So again, this is, I think, the third time he said, that God gave him lies to tell you. And he buckles down and says, I'm not going to apologize. Isn't this par for the course for false prophets in the end times? I mean, we were warned, and I'll show you some scripture in just a second here. But clearly, he made the declaration that he's not going to apologize. And I shared the dreams as a warning also to reveal some of the things the enemy was doing, how he was working. But I do believe people woke up. I was part of a prayer time in Dallas, Texas, or Plano, Texas, with over 400 people who spent 40 hours praying and fasting for the nation and for President Trump and for the situation with the White House. Uh, on October 31st, I spent another uh, eight hours, 12 hours, with some people praying uh, for the okay, nation. Is this, this is him monologuing his time bragging, I guess, about, well, look what I did. You know, it doesn't matter that my prophecies were wrong. I prayed this long on this day. I was a part of this thing on this other day. And then I spent 12 hours praying on this day. So my lies did a lot of good. <laughs> on what planet does that make sense? And, and sadly, you've got followers that are, oh, Dana, we love you, Dana. The important thing is that you tried. You gave it your best effort. And and next time you'll get them, Tiger. We're with you, false prophet. Or they'll just say, no, you're, you're not a false prophet. You're a prophet. They don't care that nothing you said came to pass. Look, he prays for 12 hours. Isn't that amazing? Kentucky's awesome. And praying for the election that was upcoming. So I want to thank people who did that. You know, if Moses 
Moses asked God not to wipe the people out, and God changed his mind. And I'm gracious for that. Oh, um, so, okay. Now he's segueing into, well, your prayers stayed the hand of God. He's trying to say that his prophecies were now conditional. Well, he didn't say that in the original dream prophecies, did he? But he's got to say it now, doesn't he? Astonishing. And I believe that our prayers did make a huge difference. And I want to invite people to continue to pray. Keep praying because things haven't been finalized and because things are obviously heating up. Uh, we're in the December now. still don't have a president-elect. There's all sorts of election fraud issues going on in, ser in several states. Um, it's gone away to the Supreme Court in some states, and those things are being pushed on to the Supreme Court at the federal level. So a lot of things about the data dream are, are still in play. Now, did everything happen that I saw? But I did not say all these things are going to happen. I <laughs> yes, you did. You absolutely did. That's the whole point of having a prophetic dream. You didn't say, you said that God told you these things were going to happen. You baked potato. It's astonishing, the denial. The absolute pride is immeasurable here. Again, standing unapologetic in defiance of the living God. I had a dream where I saw the headlines of pandemics, and I saw people in lines, I saw hospitalizations, I saw weary doctors. And I read the headlines this morning, I see hospitalizations are, are worse now than they were in the spring with COVID. You uh, know, just for the record, uh, Captain Genius here uh, said it as a prophecy. Uh, for those of you interested, and again, for those who truly follow Jesus and are seeing tyrants take over the system, on my channel, on my community page, uh, I think it was back in March, where I actually put a posting on my community page warning people uh, as a prediction and not a prophecy that, watch out, more than likely a second wave is coming. This is what deceiving uh, tyrants in spiritual wickedness do. Um, most people, again, who follow Christ, we're thinking the exact same thing. This is no prophecy. And to, to say that vague prophecies are actual, right? It's like people who, even like Squidward here, who said that uh, Trump was going to be elected. His prophecy was the Trump victory is challenged when, in fact, the opposite happened. The Biden victory is being challenged. It's unbelievable. And I know I keep saying that I don't have another adjective that I can put out. I feel for the followers who are so ultimately blinded by this deception, and more so for the followers who have, have and will fall away thinking that they've been had by this man, and they have been had by this false prophet. Uh, I see doctors, and I see shortages of doctors and nurses in a lot of places. Um, but did everything happen exactly as I saw in the dreams? Well, of course not. No, again, just to, just to confirm, nothing happened. In fact, in, in most of the cases, the exact opposite of, you said the dollar was going to die in October. In fact, the economy surged in October. You said it, in November that banks, the roofs were going to be torn off of banks and money was going to get sucked out, meaning some sort of a a uh, economic collapse robbery was taking place from those in power. But they were taking all the money. That didn't happen. The Dow Jones in November went over 30,000. Again, the opposite of what this clown said actually happened. It wasn't bad enough that he was wrong. The opposite. Oh, man. But we have to understand that dreams are symbolic. And I'll tell you this. I've learned a whole lot about dreams and visions in the, uh, you learn that the ones that you talk, that you spew, don't come to pass. I know we learned that. We all learned that. In the five months since I sat in this chair and gave the first one out. Um, once again, I'm a pastor, and I shared those things because I believe God was wanting to warn the church, was wanting to wake the church out. What is that, the fourth time he said that? Giving himself out after out after out? Hey, I told you, I'm just a pastor, not a prophet. 
And by the way, I still believe that God gave me these lies to feed to you uh, because you wouldn't read the word of God or because somehow the word of God wasn't as powerful or isn't as powerful to uh, draw you unto Christ. Things that were going on. And I want to encourage people to continue to continue to pray today. Do not stop praying. We can't put our pajamas on and go back to bed. We can't roll over like it's okay. We're all done. I have an idea for the listeners. If you are going to pray, pray that God would judge this man because of his defiance. Now, the Christian soul who has love in their heart would normally pray for a man after bringing forth fruit meat for repentance. But this man stands defiant against the living God. And very few people care. They are not on the side. His followers who adore him and lavish him with butt slaps and praise, they don't care about the living God. They care that their itching ears are getting tickled by a false prophet. They don't care that he's false. He has provided fantastic entertainment, and he's letting you know right here that he's going to continue without apology to continue in his folly. And now... It's not. You know, there is still a whole lot at work and a whole lot at play, not just with the election, but things happening around the world that impact our country. The biggest thing I've heard from people is, well, the U.N. soldiers weren't here in November. Okay, I understand that. Someone even sent me a message today saying, do you do you understand that? Then why aren't you apologizing? Why aren't you repenting? You don't understand it. You're defiant against the living God. Pastor Dana, even if there are U.N. soldiers here by Friday, I will not believe you. See, now, what he did there was he turned the situation around and placed the blame, so to speak, on the followers. And he, and he actually brought them into a critical examination. Oh, well, those sound like mean followers. You just keep doing what you do, Dana. Right? I mean, it's called deflection. Everybody has the right to believe or not believe what they want. The other main thing that I did tell people to do before they made any decisions was to pray about what they did. I had people sending me messages like, should I move? Should I sell my house? Should I, should I downsize? Should I build a bunker? Should I cash in my 401k? And that's actually good that he brought that up. You can, you can see, and I actually do believe that he got those questions because people are crazy. Don't read your Bible, and they're not praying. They're asking. King Potato here, what do you think I should do? I'm terrified. Should I sell my house? Should I do this? Should I do that? They are at his disposal because of what he did. Now, what do you think these same people who are incapable of thinking for themselves or refuse to read the Bible, what do you think they're going to do now that November came and went and none of what he said happened? Again, they're going to walk away from Jesus. Only this time, they're not going to tell him because they're embarrassed. They're going to quietly walk away from the living God because of what Squidward here did. That's the damage of false prophets. They prophesy it doesn't happen. People lose faith and they walk away from God. I'm a pastor. I shared those things so that people realize that there were situations going on and happening that I believe were coming, and I still believe are coming, so that people could make wise decisions in prayer. And so if you made decisions without praying about it, once again, I made sure I said, folks, before you make any decisions, you need to make sure you pray. Giving himself an out again, isn't he? Hey, don't blame me if you sold your house. I told you to pray. Absolutely tragic. Hear what the Lord's saying. I believe there were warning dreams to wake America up, to wake the church up. Okay, and again, this is what, the fifth time he said this. They were warning, yeah, yeah, they were lies. None of it happened, but God gave me these lies to you in order to warn you to wake you up. We're, God's waking you up with lies from a Christian pastor. Here's some lies. Wake up and come back to Jesus. Yeah, don't worry that nothing happened that I said was going to happen. Welcome back to Jesus. Yeah, a lie brought you to Jesus, but welcome back, or welcome to. I believe the persecution, the opposition, I believe the wolves are running around even right now. Isn't that funny that he talks about wolves running around? This clown is, like I said, in 13 years on YouTube, 
I've never seen a person that had such potential to do the most damage as this guy. And he's talking about wolves running around. He's the king of the wolves. The king of the wolves right here. Attacking as many people. There's a lot of people in the prophetic world, and the prophetic world right now is very, very divided. Uh, I've seen the good side of the prophetic world, and I have seen the ugly side. You are the ugly side. This whole movement right now is centered around you. So you have brought it, you have laid it all out, and you have claimed the throne. That's you, pal. To hear you talk about other wolves is hysterical. Of the prophetic world. I'm a pastor of a church. We had 50 here on Sunday morning because of the Thanksgiving holiday. I, I passed in the middle of nowhere, okay? I never asked for the platform God's given me, but obviously he did it for a reason. God uh, did not give you this platform, pal. The figure in white was not God. We know scripture talks about Satan masquerading as an angel of light, transforming, or transforming, transforming himself into an angel of light. That's who was guiding you. It was not the living God. How dare you attribute this to our perfect living God who did not speak these things to you? I'm thankful for people that have woke up, but I want to encourage faith. It's not time to relax. It's not time to relent. We have to have even more faith in God because the darkest time is always right before the dawn. And I believe things are going to get darker in that sense. So I also want to give God the glory for all the people that have gotten saved, backsliders that have come back to the Lord, people filled with the Spirit, people waking up, people witnessing. That makes a difference to me. That makes a difference that your lies brought people back to God. How long do you think their faith is going to last because of the lie that you used, the lies that you used to allegedly bring them back? Only time will tell. If there's praying people out there, I would say pray for the followers who have been deceived by this nutbag. I personally have been on the phone with over 300 people who wanted to get their lives right with the Lord, who said the sinner's prayer with me or I prayed with. Here we go again. He's monologuing his six-month resume. Look, look what else good things happened here. I personally led another 300 people to Christ while praying with them because of my lies. So you see, guys, it's not all bad. It's, it's good. Now, we've had people from 40, 46 states in our church since June who want to talk to me or meet with me. And, and not everybody's going to be happy with anything or everything. There's nothing I can say right now that will make everybody happy. Actually, you can. Here's what you can say. Father in heaven, forgive me for being an absolute heretical and deceptive false teacher and false prophet. I repent of my sins. I'm shutting down my, mis uh, my ministry. I'm closing my PayPal account, for which whatever reason, even though the world was allegedly going to end, I was taking advantage and seducing followers for money. I'm shutting that all down, and I'm going to sit in a pew and learn what it means to be a true Christian. I'm gonna learn Holy Scripture and uh, find out what a false prophet actually is. I think he knows, but those are the words that he could have spoke right now, and I think a lot of people uh, would have actually saw that and come to Christ. To, to actually see a false prophet repent, man, that would have been great, but you don't see this. Instead, you see a defiant, uh, gosh, let's just say what it is. This is an absolute wolf filled with the deception who does not serve the living God. And from the very first day when I put that video out, uh, I realized I can never again say anything publicly or privately without it being criticized, analyzed, scrutinized, <clears throat> or even sanitized. Whatever that means. And that's true. If you're going to come forward with alleged prophecies from the living God, you better be, pre be prepared for that. And, and so what are you doing now? You're complaining about that? So I'm thankful that God's given me a whole different platform. I never asked for it, wasn't looking for it, but it's there. You, you're on a platform, and you certainly, yeah, we are, continue. you certainly are on a new platform, but it was not given to you by the living God. He did not commission you to bring forth lies and make a ton of money off those lies. That was not from God. You to pray 
We've got to continue to seek God's face. We've got to continue to be on our knees and remain humble before the Lord. Now, if the dreams never, ever come true, and I, I'm going to say this, there's a lot of things that have happened in the dream, that were in the dreams that have happened, things we have seen. Name one. The headlines confirm those things. No, name, yeah. name one that isn't vague. For example, when he gave his June dream about what he says he saw in a dream back in December, he says that he saw it all, the protests, the masks, the sickness, the riots. Of course, that never made it onto video. He said that he told some members of his church he can produce these witnesses, which he never did. But name one thing that can't be put under the category of vague. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Because, you know, you're, well, there was protest. Yeah, there was protesters when you gave your June uh, statement, the video. It was already happening. Everything that you said was already happening. So, again, you're lying. I'm not going to argue about every every situation. Once again, dreams are mostly symbolic. 99.9% of the time, dreams are symbolic. Absolute lie. Not the filth that he uttered. With great specificity, he told you, Russian, Chinese soldiers, was that symbolic? No, it wasn't. He said that they were going to be rounding up people and putting them into quadrants. He said that the dollar was going to die. He said that Trump was going to win the election on that day. Now, we're not talking about, well, Trump may pull it up. No, 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 we're not talking about that. His prophecy was that he saw headlines that said the Trump victory was challenged and it was right on or about the 3rd of November, Election Day. So nothing that he said came to pass. They're symbolic. Most of the time they are not literal. But I do believe God exposed him in his plans. I believe he called the church to pray through these warning dreams, and I believe he encouraged a lot of people to change their lifestyles. And I also have gotten a whole lot more support letters and emails and encouragement in just the last couple of the last couple of days, and even since I made the post last night on Facebook about that I was going to be making this statement today. See, that's troubling, too, because it's the followers, isn't it? Do you realize that... False prophets would not exist if not for the followers. The true Christian, I mean the true follower of Jesus Christ, according to Scripture, would chastise this man, expose him, even according to Ephesians 5.11, and outright reject him. But no, 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 you don't see that in this time. False prophets not only get a pass, but their subscriptions increase, their following increases, as does everything else. It is because of the followers that false prophets not only exist, but they thrive. Everybody, a lot of people out there want me to come up here and apologize. I had dreams, and I shared those dreams online. I do. Okay, and, and again, being defiant, should he apologize? Absolutely. Say what he said. Look, I had dreams, and I am utterly sorry. I thought they were prophecies. I repent, and I'm going away, and I'm going to seek the living God. And I'm going to be on my face in the fetal position because of the danger that I put my very soul in by thinking that God spoke through me. Clearly he didn't, and I repent. That's what he should do, and that's what he should say. I do believe God moved. I do believe God uh, woke up a lot, a significant amount of people in the church to pray, to have greater faith in him. And so now the reason that I keep going with this is because he's monologuing. What is this, the sixth or seventh time that he stated this same thing? And, you know, you know the old saying, if you repeat a lie enough times, uh, you're going to believe what you're saying, as is the followers. So that's why he keeps repeating this over and over, and I'm going to keep refuting it. God did not send lies for you to speak in order to wake up the church. This is what Holy Scripture does. Holy Scripture, which is as powerful as a double-edged sword, is meant to cut asunder, to pierce the heart, to wake up those who would find Christ and come in repentance and follow Jesus Christ because of the power 
of our Holy Scripture, not because of YouTube and Facebook uh, dreams filled with lies. It's nonsense. Deeper faith in him. And I believe those prayers are important, especially as we're still without a president. We're still without a, a, an election result. We see a lot of chaos and confusion in Washington, D.C., uh, a lot of stories that are not being covered in the mainstream news, and a lot of stories that just aren't known about the things that are happening around the world that apply to our country. But I want to stand today in the belief that God still speaks through dreams and visions. I realize that... Okay, and nobody doubts that, but certainly what you should say is that he doesn't speak through your dreams. So... Don't try to deflect it as though this is the problem, that people don't believe that God speaks through dreams and, you know, with prophecy and visions. That's not the issue here. The issue is your dreams, Squidward, your dreams. That's what you need to be addressing, not other people's prophetic dreams, your dreams, which, by the way, you're still making a ton of money off of. Nice try, though. I put that out there. I put my set my I set myself up at great risk. I had been cussed at, screamed at, yelled at. Had a guy show up at my at my house at six thirty in the morning who ended up getting arrested in town later that day for excessive violence in a building in a store. Showed up to accuse me. Showed up to harass me. Um, As rightly you you need to be chastised. Now I don't know what this guy did, but you do need to be called out. And and even after that happened. You're still defiant. Look at your dumb face sitting there being defiant against the living God. People are coming and rebuking you, and now you're just you're on online. Just come look at look what happened to me. People are cussing at me and they're showing up at my house, telling me that I'm a false prophet. Oh, woe is me. You guys wouldn't want to be me right now. It's really painful. Utterly incredible. I've been cussed out more in the last five months and in my entire lifetime, and I'm 51. Um, I have had people yell at me, scream at me, um, demand things from me. I've, I've had people call me every name in the book. False prophet's been a nice title that I've gotten based on the other things I've been called. Well, good. Let's, let's look at the psychology of this. Why do you think they're yelling at you? Why do you think they're cussing you and showing up and abusing you? Because you gave a lot of false hope. You gave a lot of lies where people were preparing for doom and gloom. They made decisions in their life based on what you said. Do they have a right to be upset? Absolutely. Now, I don't know what they did, and I'm certainly not calling for violence, nor would I ever. But these people that showed up, and chastised you that were truly upset have every reason to be upset. You have destroyed their faith. And those are just the ones that you heard from. There's a whole assembly out there. Let's use the word that you yelled, a whole solemn assembly out there that didn't show up, that didn't cuss you out. They just shut off their computer and they walked away from God. You're not going to hear about these people because they're embarrassed. They feel foolish. You gave hope, and then you ripped it away. And that is what a false prophet does. And you're crying, oh, poor me. Look how bad things are for me. But once again, I never said I was a prophet. Yes. I should. You, 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 it, again, that doesn't work. What is that? The eighth time? You, you shouldn't have thought that I was a prophet. But here's some prophetic dreams. But I'm not a prophet, but I'm going to tell you what God told me to tell you. You can't separate the two. This is a madman. These dreams, and I shared these things to wake up people. And I had, no, once again, I had no idea. You share the gospel to wake up people. You share the gospel. You don't share lies. I can't say it enough. If that video would go viral like it did. But I also heard from over 40,000 people who told me, Pastor Dana, when I saw that video, it resonated deep in my heart, deep in my spirit. And what's going to be the aftermath? That part you won't see. So congratulations on waking up people with false prophecies. What is going to be the end result? 
you won't know until judgment day. But I imagine that you're going to see the stories of desperate people um, who walked away from God because of you, because of your false prophecy. It confirmed the things that I felt, that things were going wrong, hard things were coming, difficult times were coming. And it confirmed those things with me. And that's 40,000 people that have personally... Okay, by the way, these hard times were already here and more was already coming. The fact that you got on in June while riots were going on and happening, while people were being shot in the street, while buildings were burning and cities were being burnt down and chaos was everywhere, you coming out on a video saying, I prophesied that back in December, I didn't make a video, and I do have witnesses, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it. And then making more false prophecies, that was going to happen, or what was happening was happening, uh, nothing that you did uh, in June shed any light on what was already happening. The fact that you prophesied what was gonna happen in September, October, and November, that's where the real damage happened. He reached out to me, phone calls, emails, text messages, coming to the church, driving from out of state just to meet me, sit down and talk and say, hey, that changed my life. So I'm thankful for those things. I'm grateful for those things. Because there's a lot of things about it that still doesn't make sense. And I realize that there'll be probably all kinds of comments and hate-filled messages on here. I'll be called every name in the book. And that's okay. Repeating over and over and over again. Poor Dana. Poor Dana. Okay. I've, I've kind of gotten used to that the last five months. All I know is this. God gave me dreams, and I was obedient to share them on Facebook, on YouTube. Again, so I guess I'm going to stop it here. And I appreciate you listening to this for those that have lasted this long. Uh, what, I, I lost count seven or eight or nine times that he said that God gave him lies. I don't know what else I can do to try to wake up the masses who continue to follow this man, I'm trying to be as tactful and nice as I can. The damage that he's done and the fact that he's attributing this to God, you know, don't blame me. God gave me these dreams being defiant. He's calling the living God a liar. I mean, please let that resonate with you. This is remarkably horrible. And again, this man truly is in danger of hellfire. For the followers, I have a warning. Stop following false prophets. This man is nothing if not an outright Satanist. And is that dramatic? No. I can't think of a worse thing to do to a human than to falsely prophesy and have it not come to pass, and then come out on a video and say, I'm not going to apologize. I'm not going to repent. This was God's doing. If you have questions, talk to him. And that's what he's doing here. Now, let me show you some scripture. Something that you can do, if you want to cut right to the chase, go to King James Online here and just type in the words, false prophets. This will bring up all the verses that pertain to false prophets. And you can see even in the Gospels within the New Testament as well as the Old Testament how much of a problem false prophecy is. Look at Mark. For false prophet, I'm sorry, for false Christs and false prophets shall rise and show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But notice what they do. They always seduce. Matthew 24, 24, 2 Peter 2, 1, but there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. This is what I'm talking about while Dana defies the living God. If you continue, and please bear with me, we're going to read some of these. Look at Jeremiah 14, 14. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. 
and just go through these. Why do you think there are so many warnings in the Bible, Old and New Testament? 1 Corinthians, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Well, wait, 1 Kings, Jeremiah, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Look through all these. It is wonderful. And you have to make that decision. I, I can't make it for you. Only you can make a choice to follow Holy Scripture, to be warned, to stand, to test the spirits, even as it says, uh, I believe in 1 John 4, 1. Test the spirits to see if they are indeed from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. That's going to be in here somewhere. Look at, look how many. Did you see how many verses? 278 instances just from false prophets. The last thing I'll leave you with, and then I'm going to end this, is Dana Coverstone's YouTube channel, where he has, of course, there's his tagline, Brace Yourself. Uh, but over here, you'll notice a PayPal, uh, what do you call this, thumbnail, where you can donate money to this man. Now, you've got to ask yourself, uh, why would this man have a PayPal if the alleged world uh, was allegedly ending? We know that he only recently set up this page, joined on September 25th of 2020. Why is he taking PayPal donations? Why is he getting money? It's a good question. Maybe he absolutely and unequivocally knew that none of this was going to happen, but he sure does have a lot of money now, doesn't he? Will you continue to follow him? I ask you, and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will reject this man and let him know in the name of Jesus that you will not tolerate false prophecy or false prophets.